Solo Hunters Finding Wild podcast is presented by Global Rescue, the world's leading membership organization providing medical, security, evacuation, travel risk, and crisis management services. Big hole. Put on some frozen boots. Go tread some frozen time. We've got two days of solid packing. Stay on this backside until I get right on freaking top of it. We literally have 45 minutes till the plane is supposed to land. Medical and security emergencies can happen. If they do, I'm putting my trust on Global Rescue. An emergency evacuation without coverage could cost tens of thousands of dollars. With Global Rescue memberships starting at only 119 bucks, there's no reason to travel without it. Go to globalrescue.com slash solo hunter to find out more. And if you do decide to sign up, use promo code SOLO at checkout. Also, the newest Solo Hunter TV episodes and films are starting to release to our All Access members via the solohunter.com website and our new mobile app. Become a member and get early access to watch all the newest Solo Hunter stuff. Enjoy exclusive members-only content that isn't on YouTube, it isn't on Amazon, or anywhere else. Archived seasons, extended editor's cuts, and exclusive films. Only available via our website and our new Solo Hunter mobile app. Plus, members get 20% off any solo store purchase and are automatically entered into our random product giveaways with great gear from ourselves and our partners. Download the Solo Hunter mobile app today or go to solohunter.com for more membership details. On this episode, I'm sitting down with Vice President of Operations, Scott Hume, and also the Outdoor Manager, Justin Walker. And I kind of messed things up a little bit. I let my battery die while we were recording this conversation. And so the first half of this audio dropped out. So what you're going to hear is the second half of our conversation, which actually was probably the better part. And it really had the key bits of information that I was looking to get out there anyway. So hope you enjoy this conversation. And hopefully sometime soon we'll be able to get together with these guys again, drop some of the information that we missed out in the first half. All right, we're back. Yeah, I fixed it. <laughs> I haven't had that happen before. Ah, Battery no copped out on me. Ah, no worries. Yeah, we got to switch. So we were yeah. just talking about all the good things that we should include in this podcast while I was trying to fix that. Yeah. No, I didn't hear any of it what it was. Oh, <laughs> no. I, I just, you know, Scott has, uh, you know, like you said before, he's been around and he's done some really cool things. So it, it, without disclosing too much of your uh, operational information that you can't disclose, you know, why don't you tell us a little bit about your, you know, your background, where you come from and stuff like that. Cause I've heard a lot, but I want to hear as much as I can and just soak it in every time. So yeah, there's too much too much PR surrounding that. That's for sure. The uh, so my previous career, I, I was a, an army officer, so I'm retired from the army, and I was an infantry officer, and uh, spent most of my time in conventional units, uh, mechanized infantry, light infantry. Uh, I spent time in the Ranger Regiment, uh, spectacular assignment there. And then uh, as I got older, uh, the army sent me to school. I became a plans guy. And, uh, you know, that, that's it I mean, yeah. in a nutshell. But I did go to a lot of places. So I've been, you know, uh, when I was in the service, I deployed a lot. And then, uh, and then when I got out of, you know, actually when I got out of the Army, I was kind of lost. You know, you, you, you know, you've been around. You're, you think you're experienced. You have certain experiences, a lot of them, but you don't know how to, you don't know where to place yourself, right? Sh- street smarts. Maybe. Right? Yeah, maybe that's it. Smarts. But you don't know what, uh, you know, you'll, you'll lack a. You lack perspective on what your nation has to offer, and sure. uh, so anyway, as an unpaid political announcement here, I'll tell my fellow <laughs> veterans out there that man, there's a lot out here. There's a yeah. lot out here. Don't don't give up, man. There's it's good on this side. Yeah. Uh, but uh, but I understand that it's sometimes it's hard to find your spot, right? right. But and I went I went back to uh, I went back to school after I got out of the service, and uh, well, I, I got a uh, I went to business school, got an MBA. Uh, I was like. 45 years old you know everybody's like 25 right I was, you know <laughs> yeah frequently introduced myself as the dean <laughs> of the business school and uh <laughs> but uh but i did that just to kind of build a business you know build a civilian network business network kind of yeah. learn what business is all about and during that time i i 
you know, had this research project I was working on, and and it took me to uh, Global Rescue. Found Global Rescue, mm -hmm. and when I graduated, I you know I applied and took a little while through the process, but I got hired on. So I've been there eight years now, and then in the course of that eight, eight years, you know, we've talked about how many operations we do just day day in and day out, and so you know, eight years of doing that has taken me to a lot of places as well. Wow. Yeah. So, you know, that, that's in, and everyone's a you know, every, every, everything is different. Every time you walk out the door, it's a different thing. So That's it's awesome. kind of exciting. You're like, you like came from the perfect background for the position that you're in though, you know, with the military. And right. Right. You know, my, uh, I think my boss actually, the, probably the thing that put me over the edge when, when he hired me was that, uh, I was attempting to move into the, you know, get a business education. Right. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, kind of learn, you know, uh, you know, there's, there is a business to this and mm -hmm. you, you know, you have to, uh, you have to respect uh, you know, how business is accomplished to bring these services to clients. So, right. uh, so, you know, that, that helped a lot as well. You're just an all around tough guy. <laughs> yeah, I, went, <laughs> well, I hire a lot of them, but I'm not one of them. No, it's your dad that's the tough guy. That's what it is. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm going to tell you about that story tomorrow. Yeah, <laughs> yeah Scott's doing a presentation tomorrow yeah. on uh, survival and uh, leadership and survival, and it's it's going to be awesome. Yeah, yeah I, wish I, I wish I could stick around to, to hear it. Yeah. Well, he'd be one of the guys that you, you, know, you probably, you've both seen these guys. So he's from uh, northern Maine, like way up in the, yeah. you know, way up. Uh, just grew up hunting and fishing. No, I grew up in the Hudson Valley in New York, mm -hmm. but, uh, you know, the foothills of the Adirondacks, so a right. lot of, you know, I'm a few years older than you guys. There's still a lot of outdoors back in the day, you know, yeah. we're always yeah. outdoors. Yeah. But he's the kind of guy, he's about 80 now, and, uh, you know, still, you know, got a weight room in the basement and, you know, you know outside all the time doing something. And, uh, you know, he got in a, uh, he got in a, uh, well, he and my mom rode motorcycles for forever. Yeah. And uh, she she said, "Hey, that, it's got to go at, at this point." Just a couple of years ago, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, you know, the, you know, when you're in your late seventies, anyway, she made the call. He wasn't ready to give it up, but you know, right. he he deferred. And uh, <laughs> and uh, anyway, he took <laughs> so he bought a mountain bike <laughs> and went out. So that he you know rides a bike every day, golfs, does all sorts of crazy stuff. But not that golf is crazy, but he's always outside. And uh, he did exactly what you would tell you would tell your kids not to do. He went. He went out for a ride. He didn't tell anybody where he was going. He doesn't take his cell phone with him because you know he says my mom pesters him, so he's not taking a <laughs> phone. You know, and he's he didn't. He never takes medicine. You know, he's, yeah. he's an outdoor guy yeah, through and through. He's in, yeah. you know he's still uh, you know impervious to yeah. to nature, right? Yeah. Right. Hey man, he hit something and boom, over the handlebars and broke his pelvis. Oh and he's God. out in the woods. Nobody knows where he is. And uh, you no know, phone, no nothing. No nothing. So painful. Yeah, I mean, pelvis. Are and you, uh, yeah. yeah, so he 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 walked it out. He walked out, and you know. But if you're not that guy, man, you know, it yeah. could have turned out a different way. You're right. You know. Right. And uh, you know, fortunately, he was in he's in great shape, and yeah. you know, you know, tough minded. But uh, you know, could you know, yeah. could have gone another way. Like I said, so most people aren't that guy. Most people are, you know, the. Not not, not as not. and good in good a shape as they should be. Yeah. Not prepared. Not no experience. You know. I probably would have laid there, you know, making starfish and <laughs> 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 waving my arms at every plane that flew overhead as I'm laying flat on my back. Yeah, I mean, it's just like you and me, Tim. I mean, we're thinking. You know, you you do these backcountry hunts by yourself. Mm -hmm. I've done quite a few by myself, or you know, with another guy. Mm -hmm. You know, something happens. What do you do? I've always had kind of a dilemma with it because, you know, doing a lot of the solo stuff, like it's it's not the smartest way. Like you, growing up as a Cub Scout and all that kind of thing, you're, t you're taught never go alone, always have a buddy, all this kind of thing. But I think um, I think just the way life is, not everybody has that option. You know, you, 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 they kind of defer that. Well, I'm either, I'm either not going to go fishing or hunting or I'm going to just go by myself because my buddies can't go. And so I always had just kind of this internal battle with myself that this is, this is not the smartest way to go do this is, you know, I should. So I had always set up precautions where my wife had a map, my brother had a map, yeah. everybody knew where I was going to be, when I would be out, when I would call and those kinds of things. But, um, it's, it's kind of weird to be promoting that and yet probably shouldn't be promoting that in a way. Um, <laughs> So now with stuff like this, I, I feel like, yeah, it can be a little bit more comfortable saying, yeah, go out for 
go out for a week or go out for 10 days and go do a solo trip and yeah. just Call prepare us. yourself and have that little extra level of security. Be smart, you know, train yourself yeah. on what you need to, to know if, if something does happen. And, uh, I can get, I guess I can be okay with that now. So yeah, now yeah. after 10 years of promoting solo hunter, I can be comfortable about promoting solo hunter. <laughs> 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 it's true though. You know, we, we joke all the time and I joke with, you know, a lot of my partners and stuff. I say, Hey, if you have a problem, you know, call us, but please, I hope you don't call us, yeah. <laughs> you know, and same with you, you know, I hope yeah. you don't have to, but if you do, you know, that's, that's what we're good at. Oh, I never will. I never will. <laughs> As he knocks on the table. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, well, this is exactly the conversation we try to have with people. You know, it's the plan, the, the plan in advance, which is, it's it's like administrative, right? It's pain, right? Yeah. Get the map out, yeah. map your route, show your wife, tell your buddy, yeah. you know, the cell phone number, the sat phone number. Yep. Yeah. Let's rehearse this. That's boring, man. I just want to get out and fish. Yeah. And, uh, but, you know, but laying the groundwork, man, if, if we have to come looking for you. It yeah. makes it, it really gives you a huge advantage. Yeah. It could to, save, could save your life. Right. It definitely I mean, could, definitely sure. in, in the long run. Yeah. The way I do it now over the last, I don't know, say five or six years. And, and now that technology is making it even easier is with, with my Onyx maps, I can actually share my waypoints and I can pre-designate campsites. And, and I did that in my, with my trip in Alaska this year, cause there was obviously going to be no service up there. And I just charted out each potential camping site where I was going to be plan A, plan B had the waypoints and then just literally just shared those with other people that have the same, the same app and then they can pull up those waypoints too. So it's with technology, it makes it a lot easier, the in reaches and all those kinds of things. Yeah, definitely. Um, when you, with your service and when you set that up, is it a phone number can, or do pe can people can tie that into like their in reach where it's a text or an, they can connect your number to their SOS button or those kinds of things? All, all those things. Yeah. Okay. So Delorm, yeah, we have them. We, mm -hmm. I have them on the staff. We use them. Mm -hmm. uh, we're using them in Nepal right now because it's, it's climate season. We have a team over there right now, medical team. Uh, so yeah, if you have a Delorm, you could, uh, you know, you could, uh, set it up. So that comes right into our op center mm -hmm. and then we could respond through it. Uh, same with, if you have a, uh, if you rent a sat phone or buy a sat phone, yeah, you know, I we own, can, own my sat phone. Yeah. You so. could, you can make us a, uh, you know, you can put us in your emergency contacts list or your SOS button. You can enable to uh, go right to our app center. Yeah. yeah and we and encourage then, that you know we yeah. want that we want to be the ones handling it because we're the best at what we do yeah i always wondered that so. what what happens if i mash my sos button on my phone i didn't know i wouldn't i didn't know where it would go you know mm -hmm. probably because i haven't set it up yet <laughs> yeah well, you have to set those a, things up there I might be a know. provider with the phone yeah you know what i mean be, maybe yeah, they have a, a preferred provider or, or go someplace yeah. i don't know but you know we, we can talk you through that yeah you know, i'm i'm gonna go to um so the phone, the sat phone that I use now is a spot and, and they don't, they don't make the sat fo satellite phones anymore. And I don't think they provide the service. I just have to have a, another data service, yeah. data plan for the satellite. So I'm going to be changing to something different anyway. I've always just liked the phone because I like to talk to my kids. You know, I like to call and talk to my wife and have that verbal communication. It helps me out when I'm out there, uh, um, you know, on long trips and it also helps them yeah. quite a bit rather than just punching a text like my buddies do they punch text and then they're out for the night but um well we know a guy so if you need some, you? that service yeah, yeah we can take there care you of go. that yeah we there do go. so no it's it's good and i think there's you know maybe in the in the hunting world especially the back country world there's a standard misconception you know with like spot or some of these other you know um devices that you just push the button and, uh, you know, and this is how I thought before I was involved with Global Rescue is, oh, you just push the button and it sends out a signal. And then what? You Next just sit you know, there. a helicopter shows yeah, up. Yeah, then, then what? They're, they're sending in the, the team and, it, you know, magically they're just going to figure right. it out. And that, you know, now knowing what I know, it, it's just not that way. Um, you know, you push those buttons, they'll send a signal out. And then, yeah, you better pray that somebody's coming because if you don't have that communication, if you can't talk to them and you don't know, for them to find you, even with a sat phone, can be very, very difficult. Really? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's very important. You know, that's what we communicate to our members and our clients is, hey, we need that two-way communication is huge. Um, we're, we're going to want to talk to you at one point, whether that's via, you know, text message, um, email, but, you know, preferred, obviously, is, is sure. communicating on the phone if yeah. possible. Yeah, I, I prob I, I'll always have a phone, I, I think, just because I like that communication with yeah. my family. So. Yeah. 
Sure. Well, I, I, you know, although we, we you know, 2019 is a good year, you know, digital technology is great. Cell phone, you know, sat phones, cell phones, the warm devices, you know, this is a, this is a whole new generation of capability for taking it to the back country, but it is not a plan. Your, sa- sure. your sat phone is not the plan, yes, right? Exactly. <laughs> right? It's just, right. it's just, a, it's just a piece of it. You still got to do the homework. You still got to let somebody else know. Yeah. Right. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah. I think that's, yeah, the, the pre-planning is huge anytime you're going anywhere. Yeah. I've always been really anal with that. In fact, I used to have before, before I had the GPS or anything else, I would get the road Atlas maps and I'd tear out the page and I'd circle it for my wife and I'd say, I'm here, <laughs> you're here, you know, so that she could figure yeah. all that. And then, you know, my brother would no, normally, normally when I go somewhere, somebody that I know knows where that area is. And so I just tell them, Hey, I'm going to be up here. So kind yeah. of thing, so. I think the big thing is too, if, if you've never had anything happen, you know, then you think you're almost indestructible, mm-hmm. you know, Oh, I'm, you know, young and healthy. I'm fine. But man, you break an ankle or something six miles deep in terrain. That's not forgiving. What do you do? Yeah. You know? Anything can happen to anybody. The most prepared person can still have something happen for yeah. sure. Yeah, and we hear that all the time. And we've got some of our partners that have had things happen to them. And you know, one of our the gentlemen that we work with all the time. He's you know we had to bring him out of Bolivia, mm-hmm. and without getting in too much detail. But um, you know, he he tells me all the time. He says, "I just can't believe it happened to me." You know, he's like, "This is something you would read in the National Geographic magazine." But it happened to me and, you know, he's lucky that he can still see today, you know, because of Global Rescue. And it's it's cool to talk to him. But, you know, that's a perfect example of what can go wrong in some of those situations. And they just it seems like it's a it's a snowball effect when something happens then it just creates a, you know, bigger problem. So I was surprised when I really started looking into it heavily, how affordable it was, you know, how relatively inexpensive it is for. And and the the package options that you can that you can do. So it's not like it's you know, you're not talking thousands of dollars that a person's got to drop to have some protection when they go on that. No, know, yeah, I mean blacktail hunt in Alaska or something. Yeah, like. seven to ten day trip. You know, you're anywhere from 120 to 159 dollars. Yeah. Um, our yearly membership for medical um, evacuation is 329 dollars, mm-hmm. which is you know super affordable if you're going on multiple trips for the year. You know, you buy it and then you just have us in your back pocket. That's cheaper than an out-of-state deer tag. Oh, for sure. Yeah. (laughs) I mean, and, and, you know, what you can do with that, I mean, like we were saying earlier, you know, you take part of it, our advisory services as well. You know, we'll we'll help you through anything, plane tickets, passports, whatever you need. Hmm. So So when I miss that flight, I can call you guys and you'll be like, you'll take care of it for me? Is that what you're saying? We'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll definitely help. Uh, you know, we we get some interesting calls about stuff like that. But, hey, we'll, that's what we're there for. We're there to help and encourage and and hopefully uh, smooth things over if we can. Yeah, for sure. No, it's cool. I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited to not ever have to use your service. So. <laughs> <laughs> hopefully, uh, hopefully, you know, good luck continues and I never have to have that. Have that. But it is, uh, it really is. When I to- told my wife, you know, Cause she always, when I come back from a trip or, you know, convention and when I had met him at sheep show that I actually live in Reno. So that was, that was nice. But we always kind of talk about how things went and all that. And when she heard that I had met you and global rescue and I told her what it was, she's like, Oh, you have got to talk to them. You have got to get that. And I, was like, I know, uh, I know. Yeah, so it's, the feelings mutual for us yeah, as well. She's so. super excited about that. And it, and it really is a good fit for in talking with Justin, you know, Part of what I do in working with brands and and different partners is it's really comforting to have partners that you blend well with and that that I feel like that you feel like can you can complement really well with on your side of things as well as their side and actually benefit them more so than just um, trying to chase down a sponsorship and that's what I feel like Global Rescue is you know it's something that it really excites me you know that that I can promote and talk about and believe in and get behind and use you know at some point so i appreciate that we're happy to have you good yeah glad to do it it's gonna be great yeah Yeah, it'd be fun yeah really happy to be working with the solo hunter organization it's gonna be great (laughs) (laughs) organization i need to make it more of an organization (laughs) the two the two don't go they don't go hand in hand it's solo and then organization (laughs) that doesn't yeah well <laughs> yeah. No, i appreciate you guys taking the time to to do this and 
uh, look forward to doing some more, get together with you on a hunt or something in the future. Yeah. Be great. Scott, do you any, do you do any hunting or are you just, uh, I didn't grow up hunting. I, I was a, I was a freshwater angler. Gotcha. Yeah. So think about the Adirondacks, the cat skills kind of up that way. That, yeah. That, that's where I grew up. I spent some country. time up in upstate New York. Yeah. Right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. 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 Spent, um, Saugerties, lived in Saugerties for a little while. Oh, really? Yeah. All right. We're in the same neck of the woods. Right. Holy yeah. smokes. Did some yeah. spelunking in the caves and everything. Oh, going. yeah. I know yeah. exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Good, good, <laughs> good area. So, um, I, you, I love it. He shoots, don't you, Scott? You well, shoot yes, like yes, crazy. I he, do. Yeah. He's a big shooter. Yeah. So, shooting yeah. like. Uh, Long I'm, range, I'm, no, handgun. I'm a handgun guy. Handgun, gotcha. yep, yep. Paper puncher. Yep, that's it. That's all I do. <laughs> <laughs> hey, they're fun. I've got a buddy, Ben Young. He'll if he'll listen to this and he'll crack up. He went out. He just he's he's one of those guys that talks 100 miles an hour, and then says everything twice to make sure that you hurt him twice. <laughs> um, but he's like super passionate and avid about everything he does, and he's getting into this hand this shooting timed shooting. Bought himself one of the little timer things or whatever. I don't know know anything about it. And uh, one day he's like, I'm going to go out to this shooting course. They're putting on a kind of a clinic of speed shooting or tournament shooting or whatever it is. So he went out there to do this, and he's he's the newbie, and there's all these military guys and people that have been doing it for years and demonstrating. It got up to be his turn, and he, like, he crushed everybody by, like, I don't know, half a second or a second or something, just crushed them. And so – he said that he got a bunch of dirty looks because they thought he was a ringer coming in. And, he, and he's like, no, I just drink that much caffeine. I'm just that fast. <laughs> <laughs> so now yeah. he's like, he's to the point where he's like shaving off his gun. He's something. one of those guys. Yeah. yeah. yeah he's yeah, like yeah. polishing his gun. Is that you, Scott? Are <laughs> no, you that not guy? Me. No, oh, no, 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 no. He's like, I just, uh, no. I just got to break another one hundredth of a second or something yeah. like that. I'm definitely not that guy. Yeah. No, I'm, um, no, I'm just, I'm recreational. I like to do yeah. it, you know, yeah. just. You like to just tip over dummies, right? That's it. That's exactly what I like to do. Yeah, that's fine. What's your favorite gun? What are you uh, shooting? Uh, uh, Sig 226. Cool. Yeah, chambered yeah. in nine millimeter. Yeah. You must be military. That's my piece. <laughs> yeah, you must be military. <laughs> nah, they love Sigs. I got a lot of military friends. They love Sigs, which is good. They're a great gun. Yeah. So. Oh, man, manufactured in uh, in uh, Portsmouth, New Hampshire. Want everybody yeah. to know that, right? That's uh, right. That's right by our. Not far from our headquarters. Wasn't the old Remington factory in upstate New York there somewhere? Bingham, or where was that? Well, yeah. Somewhere, somewhere there. Yeah, somewhere it, well, there. Ithaca, Ithaca. Ithaca Arms, yeah. but yeah, I'm not right. sure exactly where Remington was, but it was out that way. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. 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 There's That's another cool. big manufacturer uh, also. It's uh, Sturm Ruger. It's up in New Hampshire oh, really? as well. Yeah. 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 Neat part of the country, you know. You don't think of upstate. You don't think of New York. You know, you don't automatically think outdoorsy or recreation, or, but. Man, the time that I spent up there, there was so much to do: mountain biking, hiking, hunting, fishing. Yeah, it was it's an amazing place up there. Yeah, I think the most of the country. Yeah. You think of New York. You say New York. If you're not from up there, you think New of New York City, City right? Yeah. Yeah. New York's a huge state, right? right? Yeah, it's big. You know, borders uh, two Great Lakes. Borders a huge yeah. border with Canada. You yeah. know, you got the the Adirondacks and the Catskills, Western New York. You know, yeah. yeah. And then the northwest of Pennsylvania. You know, big uh, big hunting communities and fishing communities up right. there. You know, so yeah, yeah there's a California is the same way. One of those you just don't think of it, but man, it's there's. Er, yeah. I think every state has that. They have people think of Nevada as it's just a desert, it's a dry, but there's so much water and so much you know <laughs> big canyons, big mountains, and so every yeah. state is kind of kind of has that, I suppose. Yeah, um, yeah. I was amazed when the first time I went to our uh, headquarters there in Lebanon, New Hampshire. I mean, yeah. you know, me and my wife were driving down in, and it was just like. What in the heck? What have we got ourselves into? This is just different than anything I've yeah. ever been to. You, even on the west, on the East Coast, you know, you go to North Carolina, you go to D.C., Virginia, some of those areas. New Hampshire and, and New England in general is just so different than anything I've ever seen. I mean, it's, it's beautiful, beautiful area of the country. Not a straight road There's for more than 100 no, yards, no, right? Anywhere. No, <laughs> I mean, like right now, you know, I'm, I'm walking out my, on my back deck and I shoot my bow out of my backyard. Like I yeah. shoot right there. I'm shooting every day. And it's just awesome. It's therapy for me. So <laughs> yeah, I flew into. This has been several years ago. Flew into Boston to meet up with some friends, and we drove from Boston up through New England and up into New Brunswick, Canada. And oh, that's yeah. what I remember is driving through there is just all the blueberries, like just the mountains of blueberries. <laughs> oh, you were up up in Maine. Yeah, yeah, you can yeah, see yeah. Maine. Yeah. Holy smokes! Anybody can go out there and just pick these things, yeah. you know. And so that's why there's so many bears, a lot yeah. of black bears in mm-hmm. in New England. Lots of black bear so cool it's cool well i think that's that's been kind of um 
in fact, I've got a film that I'm releasing on the 17th. So after this podcast to release, so this is a, a, a personal plug for everybody to go watch my film, uh, but it's called finding wild and on X maps part. And I partnered on this, um, a little over a year ago, started talking about this and we released a film last year and immediately I wanted to start working on this and it's called finding wild, but it's all wrapped around almost everything, but the kill and you know, what a typical person might think a hunter is out there for so it's it's all the things that you experience the locations the animals um just the trials the solitary the french the friendship the camaraderie so it's everything that we look for those are some of the things that i enjoy about the travel that i get to do is seeing those different areas you know the different topography whether it's the blueberry fields in maine or the the brown bears on sitka alaska it's just, or excuse me, on uh, Kodiak, like it's all those things that wrap into it that make it kind of addicting for me and make me feel like I want to plan that next adventure and that next trip. It's becoming a lot more about everything, but the actual, hunt, but yeah. the actual like process of the hunt, I suppose, you know, yeah. so pretty right. excited about that and hopefully it's received well and kind of let people know more of like that's that's what I'm out there to do more so than just put another head on the wall. Yeah, it's it's like you know refueling your soul is kind of how I look at it. You know, I tell my wife that you know because she don't love you know when I'm gone for you know x amount of days, but that's that's how I feel. I I need the mountains. I need that freedom, and that's just you know that's what drives me and calls me and calls me back again and again. I just yeah. you know it's like Montana last week. You know I I've been all over the country. I've been around the world and done some cool hunts and been very fortunate, but you know, going there last week, I mean, we had a mountain lion at 25 yards and right. I mean, you know, it was, it was just wild. It was just wild. And I just loved it. I mean, we've seen whitetail, mule deer, elk, moose every day, you know, got probably 15 yards from a female moose, you know, which is kind of nerve wracking, but it really cool in the right. same sense, you know? So, uh, we saw a bunch of bears and it just, it's just wild. And I love that. I, it just calls back to me so I can resonate with that, you know, really well. It's just, you know, whether I killed a bear or not, you know, obviously I like to harvest an animal and, and take a mature animal out of the, you know, the gene pool. But, um, you know, definitely, you know, the whole wild aspect behind everything yeah. is what, is what drives me. The more, more people we can get out there, the more, you know, like with organizations like BHA and others and that, that are really tr promoting the public lands and the use usage of it and access of it. Yeah. Like, I feel like, I'll never be a, I'll never be like a spokesperson or like a you know operations guy for any <laughs> any group or anything. The only thing I can do is promote the lifestyle of it. I suppose you know that's kind of where I feel like my place is is showing people what they can do and accomplish on their own or with a group of people and what there is out there to experience. And the more people we can get out there experiencing those things and falling in love with the wild and falling in love with the public land and falling in love with the animals that actually have some vested interest into it, the more we can have those people with the same voice, you know, speaking the same language and fighting for the same things if, to protect the same things. So yeah, it's awesome. It's more, more than just about us hunters. You know, there's, hunt, there's a lot of people that are out there recreating that uh, don't pull a trigger ever. So we just kind of have to keep that in mind that if we want to keep our ability to, to do it and not, not let it turn into to something that we don't, recognize in the future or can't gotta, use or can't use you know, yeah. yeah that's the biggest fear is not being able to use it oh yeah i mean that's where i'm at a lot of places here in idaho too you know that, that have been bought up by private firms that, that we used to hunt and fish as kids you can't even you can't touch now so don't yeah. want any more of that to happen yeah please no <laughs> please <laughs> so anything else you guys want to discuss or go over or talk about no, I think we bored the hell out of everybody for <laughs> yeah. 30, no, I would just <laughs> tell you this might be an innocuous point, but the uh, one thing I was thinking about, I had a, I had a, uh, a British friend a while back uh, tell me that you know uh, for this conversation that we're having, it feels like uh, it feels like an American conversation, right? Yeah. You know, we're trying to you know save uh, save public lands uh, or put more you know land into uh, you know into some kind of conservatorship where you know we get we get more interest by our, our fellow citizens. Mm -hmm. But he said that uh, in his opinion, his perspective was that uh, a lot of people who are not from America look to America as like the you know wild. Uh, are, are interested in coming here, are 
Uh, they just kind of don't know how to how to go about it. But uh, there's a lot of interest overseas to come and, and, and be part of exactly what we're talking about here today. And you may find some find some allies in strange places. Right. So, you know, right. I mean, this might be even bigger than you think it's going to be. Yeah. yeah. No, I agree with that. Yeah. Why would it, why should it be any different? We, we dream about going to Africa or right, to right. other places. I'm sure yeah. they have the same same passions. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah, you know, sometimes the perspective's different when it's in your own backyard. You know, I mean, we realize what a gem we have, you know, up here in the, in the Northwest or all across the, the lower 48 and Alaska and Hawaii. But, you know, other people see it also, you know, I mean, you just got to yeah. tap into that. You know, I don't know. I'm not saying you have to. I'm just saying, like, I, you, you may find some allies uh, elsewhere, you know, trying to help uh, help the cause. By default, we'll, we'll be tapping into that, I'm sure. <laughs> you know. Even my buddy up in Alaska, he's lived in Alaska for 15 years. Like, he's not that interested in hunting sheep for himself, you know, killing a sheep anymore. And I'm thinking, man, if I was in Alaska, I'd be killing sheep. Because to us, that's a, that's a novelty, right? Yeah, it's a it's big like deal. It's like a rare, expensive opportunity to hunt a sheep. For them, that's, that's every year they get to do that. Yeah. But maybe they don't get to chase mule deer, you know, or something yeah. like that. Or, it's, I mean, you could say Africa, the same thing. Africa. You know, some of the guys who get to go do that all the time, well, we don't get to do that all the time. So, yeah. or New Zealand or Asia, any of, places, any of those Yeah, it's, huge so i want to experience them all me too at some point <laughs> uh yeah so that when i get big i can say i did something cool <laughs> well, i think you're doing it already man. <laughs> yeah you come on now come on too. yeah my biggest claim to fame is i love the hell out of what i'm doing right now that's it that's and i'm cool. enjoying enjoying the way life is right now and that's that's my frustration with with the way life is now too is it's happening so fast and technology is changing so fast and everything that just when you feel like you're comfortable something changes you know the stupid operating system on my computer changes and then you then, you've, then it blows your life all the heck right so, no. well i appreciate it again scott and justin and it was a good time and uh hopefully we get to do it again at some point yeah, yeah. wow this is great forward yeah, to the love to do it again yeah, yeah. Awesome. for sure so so you can edit the following statement out when you, when you when you get back and do your technical stuff, I can but, or but, I should, but uh, both. <laughs> <laughs> you you, you got to request Justin and I for for all the cool places you go. Yeah, exactly, right, right? exactly. No, you but, don't you don't edit this out. I want to in I want to end the podcast. Yeah, like yeah, I request. I'm going to yeah. Missoula. I'm going down to Reno. You know, Scott be, and Justin. Uh, Scott and Justin got to be out here. Uh, I'm in trouble. Um, <laughs> please hey, send S- Scott. Scott available. <laughs> He's in Manila. <laughs> oh, damn. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I like it. That's awesome. All right. Well, we'll shut this thing down and look forward to, to some more in the future. Appreciate it. Great. Thanks. Yes, good. Thanks. Thank you so much for listening. Be sure to tune in to the next episode where I sit down for a brief talk with my 14-year-old son, Hudson, just a couple of days before we head out on his first turkey and hog hunt. He shares some great insight into hunting with dad, what he's expecting for his first hunt, dealing with an inquisitive mom, and pre-hunt excitement. This podcast is also brought to you by Onyx Hunt, creators of the most comprehensive digital mapping system for hunters. Download the Hunt app from the iTunes or Google Play Store and use promo code SOLO for your 20% discount at checkout. Know where you stand with Onyx. Also brought to you by BlackOvis.com. Search the word Solo Hunter to see all the great Solo Hunter branded gear that they carry. Link to my recommended product guide and gear list. Order yourself a custom built arrow setup from their custom shop or just browse the website for all the latest gear. If you do decide to make a purchase, make sure to let them know that Solo sent you by entering the word Solo at checkout. Thanks again for all the continued support and please be sure to email with your questions or comments about the show and hit that dang subscribe button and leave a five-star review of the podcast. As always, stay humble, stay safe, hunt happy, and get out and find your wild.